In this video we're going to look at thirds and a third is a number that doesn't have an exact value, for example pi um, doesn't finish and there's certain numbers that if they don't have a definitive answer like what is the square root of 2, it's just a decimal that goes on and on and on forever. So that would be a third we would call root 2 a third, we would call root 5 a third, root 11 a third, root 7 a third. We would not call the square root of 16 a third, because the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so at the top we've got examples of thirds, and here is an example that is not a third because we know what the square root of 16 is. The square root of 16 is 4. In order to be able to work with thirds effectively, you need to know what your square numbers are. You need to know what 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, all the way up to, I would say, 12 squared, even potentially onwards up to 15 squared. You need to be comfortable with that. Just one piece of notation that I'm just going to remind you of. If we know, if we know that, let's say, 5 squared is 25. Remember, squared means times by itself. So squared means 5 times 5. 5 squared means 5 times 5. If I was to write the square root of 25, what that means is what multiplied by itself is 5, is 25, and we know that the answer is 5. If I was to ask what's the square root of 64, that means what times by itself is 64, and 8, 8 is our 64. Square root of 100, what times by itself is 100? 10. So essentially, if you're asked a square root question, you just have to think, what squared is this number? So 10 squared, 8 squared, 5 squared. In the unit of studs, there's lots and lots and lots of different facts we need to remember. But the first thing we're going to consider is this property here about studs. Because they essentially studs is always going to be focusing about things under a square root. If inside a third we can write something as something times something else, what we can essentially do is we can split this square root into two separate square roots. So for example, if this was 2 times 5, we could split this into the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. Okay, let's have a look at some examples to see how this is going to work in practice. So let's look at example 1. We'll go for the square root of 24. Square root of 24. Here's your strategy. You need to find the biggest square number that goes into 24. So you need to think what times what is 24. So you've got 1 and 24, you've got 2 and 12, you've got 4 and 6. I know that 4 is a square number. So what I'm going to do to my 24 is I'm going to split it into 4 times 6. I split it into 4 times 6 and not 2 times 12 because I know that 4 is a square number. I know that something squared is 4. I'm now going to apply this property here. Inside my bracket I've got something times something. So I can now split them up. I can break them up. And split that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And what we know is that we know what the square root of 4 is. We know that the square root of 4 is 2. And then I can just leave the root 6 as it is. So the square root of 24 we can write more simply as 2 root 6. I did it this way, so if I went another way, if I split it into, let's say, 2 times 12, and then using the property at the top, I could split it into root 2 times root 12. Okay, in this question we're asked to simplify the third root 18. So we need to find two things that multiply to give us 18. And one of them is going to need to be this, a square number. Okay, one of them is going to need to be a square number. And generally we try and have to find the biggest square number. So what goes into 18? We've got 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Well, I know that 9 is a square number. So I'm going to write 18 as 9 times 2. Using my property from the previous slide... I can split them into the square root of 9, 
to square root of 2. Then, I know what the square root of 9 is. That's why I chose this number, because I can. I know what this value is. I know that the square root of 9 is 3. And I've got times root 2, so I'm just going to write it as 3 root 2. Okay, here in this example, we are going to do the square root of 72. Okay, but there's two different ways I'm going to show you how to do this. One is longer than the other. So we need to think about numbers that multiply together to give us 72. One of them is going to be a square number. So think about 72. You've got 1 in 72, 2 in 36. Well, I know that 36 is a square number because 6 times 6 is 36. So I'm going to go this way. I'm going to write 72 is 36 times 2. I can then apply my property to write this as root 36 times root 2. I know that the square root of 36 is 6. And I can leave that as root 2. 6 root 2. This is the quicker way to do it because I chose the biggest number. That was a perfect square that 72 can be divided by. What I'm going to show you here is you can still do it without identifying the biggest number. You just leave yourself a lot more work. Say for example when you were thinking about 72, you were thinking about 9 times 8. Which is perfectly valid. You could choose 9 times 8 because 9 is a square number. You could then split it to get root 9 times root 8. We know that the square root of 9 is 3. So you get 3 root 8. But see if we are to compare this answer and this answer. They don't look the same. So we need to do a wee bit more delving with this. When you're simplifying your thirds and you think you get to your final answer, just have a final check of the thing under your square root. Have a check and think, can I write that as something times something with one of those numbers being a square number? So thinking about 8, how can I write 8? I can write 8 as... 4 times 2. And I chose 4 because I knew that 4 was a square number. I can then split my brackets. So the 3 just remains at the front. So essentially this means times. And I know what the square root of 4 is. I know that 2 squared is 4. So I can write that as 3 times 2 times root 2. I can then simplify my numbers to get 6 and my third part root 2. Okay, so we can obviously, obviously see that identifying the biggest number, the biggest square number that the number in the square root can be divided by, um, the factor, is the most important thing because it's a, lot, it's a lot shorter. But if you fail to identify the biggest square number that goes into this number, you can still follow through your method but your final check should be, look at your number under your square root. Can you rewrite that as a perfect square times something? If you can, keep following it through. Okay, here we've been asked to simplify the third 3 root 45. Okay, so although that there's a number in front of the third here, we just treat the third as we always would. What this means is it just means 3 is multiplying this third, so we need to remember just to multiply our third at the bottom by 3 at the end. It's similar, just if this was 3x, it would just mean 3 times x. Okay, so we are going to keep going. So we're going to write 3, and we are going to try and write the square root of 45 as something times something. One of those numbers is a square number. So let's think about what multiplied, or what times what is 45? We've got 1 in 45, we've got 3 in 15, and we've got 5 and 9. Well, I'm just spot here, 9 is a square number. So, I'm going to write 45 as 9 times 5. Then use my property. I'm still going to carry forward this 3. I can then write 9 times 5 as the square root of 9, times the square root of 5. I know what the square root of 9 is. I know that the square root of 9 is 3. And then just to tidy up, 9 root 5. And just have a final check. Can this be written as two other numbers? One of them is a square? No. So, I'm done.
So your essential strategy is when you're looking at your thirds, try and find the biggest number that is a square number that can go into it. So 45 can be written as 9 times 5. It can also be written as other numbers, but 9 is a square number. You're always trying to identify a square number. And if possible, try and identify the biggest square number, because that's really going to reduce uh, the amount of working that you have to do. Okay, thank you very much.